Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the notes on Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, which is R sub S. Okay. At the end of this, you should be able to say, I can calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient for a data set, and I can determine the best correlation coefficient to use for a data set. Okay, so first things first, Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. What we can do is we can look at how truly linear data is by giving each variable in each piece of data a rank and then graph the data by rank starting with one for the smallest value. Okay, so for example, let's say here's our X and Y data. So 3, 8, 7, 15, 4, 9, 6, 13, and 5, 7. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rank each data point by both X and Y. So this would be the X rank, and this is gonna, oh, well, it already shows right here. So here's the X rank. Okay, so we just write 37465, 37465, and then we start with the smallest value, give that a one, three, four is the second biggest, five is third, six is fourth, seven is the fifth highest, okay? Now we also rank all the Ys, so we just write eight, 15, nine, 13, and seven, all in order like that. And now the Y rank, uh, the smallest one is 7, and then 8, and then 9, 13, and 15. Okay, and now what we do is we actually graph those rank numbers. Okay, so for example, the X is going to be 1, and the Y is going to be 2. So now we're just going, we're graphing simply by rank. So X is 1, Y is 2 is that one right there. X is 5, Y is 5, so there's 5, 5. X is 2, Y is 3, 2, 3, 4, 4. And then we have 3 and 1, okay? So by looking at this here, it appears, the data appears to be fairly linear with the exception of one piece of data, this right here. It appears to have an upward trend, okay? So this is Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Well, actually, it's Spearman's rank, and then we'll talk about the correlation coefficient here in a second. Okay, so Spearman's correlation is often used when the data is clearly not linear, but does have an upward or downward trend. Okay, let's look at an example to kind of help us better understand the Spearman's rank correlation. Okay, correlation coefficient. Example five, population of meerkats in a small village in Southern Africa has been recorded every year since 2010. Okay, so we're gonna do, here's all of our data, and then we're gonna do all these different things here. Draw a scatter plot, scatter diagram, calculate the Pier Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, um, so forth and so on. So let's just kind of do each piece here at a time. Draw a scatter diagram for the data. So. This is all going to be our X. This is going to be our Y. So the years, and this is years since 2010. So we have to go all the way up to nine. So there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's as far as we need. And then population, we're going to want to go say, I mean, yeah, the lowest we have is what, 65. So you could put a little zigzag in here and start at say 60 but I figured it's okay just to start at zero and go all the way up. And we need to go up to at least 178. So 20, 40, 60, 80, all the way up to 180. So we're set. So now we're gonna simply graph these points. So at year zero, we were at 178. So that's about right there, right? And then let's graph the rest of these. Okay, so here's what we ended up with. So definitely looks like there's a trend here and it's not linear, okay? Uh, next thing we're gonna do is calculate Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, but first let's do a quick little uh, comedy break, all right? <laughs> I'm jumping off and <laughs> leaving for it, just trying to get it. Pancake at least is smart enough to know what's around him. Uh oh, here comes me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, 
calculate Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. So uh, that is where we're going to want to use our handy dandy graphing calculator. Okay, so stat, we're going to edit our data, right? And first thing we want to do is clear all this data out here and then enter it all in. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 into list 1 and then all these populations into list 2. All right. Okay, so here's all of our data. So our Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, our RP, remember stat, and we're going to calculate and we are going to do a linear regression. Okay, so we push enter here <clears throat> and it gets us into our X list and our Y list, list one and list two. Again, make sure your frequency list is empty. Shouldn't have anything in that because there's no frequency on any of this data here. So we're just gonna basically just, you can push enter all the way down until you get to calculate. Push enter one more time. <clears throat> and here is our linear regression. We get Y equals AX plus B which basically means our A here, that we're gonna make this really kind of nice here. Uh, oh, the P Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. We're not having to actually go through and uh, sketch our line here. So our, we get a negative 0.799, so we're gonna call that um, R equals negative 0.8, which is uh, good and strong. Okay, let's see, oops, that's for this up here. Uh, find the ranks for each variable and draw a scatter diagram. So we're going to rank each of these variables and then we're going to um, draw our scatter gram for that as well. Okay. Okay. So I simply copied all the data down here so we can put the rank underneath and the population here and put the rank underneath. Normally, if, if you're just doing this, like say on a test or whatever, I would just Put the ranks above and below on each of these but this will just make it a little bit more clear for notes purposes but i don't expect you to do to go through and rewrite everything so um our rank here so the smallest will be one all the way up to the biggest since there's 10 pieces the biggest will be 10 so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten because everything is in order Zero is our lowest, our lowest rank, and nine is our highest with our highest rank. Okay, and then we do the same thing here. And if you'll notice, let's see, our lowest rank here is 66. Oh, no, it's actually 65, isn't it? There's one here, and then two for 66, three for 68, four for 70. Now we have a tie for the next one, so that's gonna be five and six together. So what we want to do is do 5 plus 6 divided by 2, and that's 11 halves, which is 5 and a half. So each one of these get 5 and a half as their rank. Okay, so that was 5 and 6. So then the next one after that is going to be 7, because we've done 5 and 6 together here. So the next one's going to be 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. Okay, so now that we have them all ranked, what we're going to want to do is now draw a scatter diagram. So I'm going to make a little chart here. And it doesn't really, it's not really going to help to use this same chart here because this is 1 through 10, 1 through 10, and that's 1 through 180 and 1 through 10 over here. So we're going to uh, make a separate graph for this one. Okay, so there's roughly our rough sketch here. So now we're just going to simply go through and plot these points. So at 1, we're at 10. 2 were at 9, oops, it's a little bit off, 2 were at 9, and we're going to go through and graph all the rest of these as well. Okay, so here's what all of our uh, points graphed look like. So let's see, we've done that and that, and find the ranks for each graph and draw a scatter diagram. We just did that. So next, calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, R of S. So R of S. Spearman's rank. We will do back on our ca graphing calculator here. So we're going to go back into stat, edit, and we're going to have our data that we just used in there. We want to get rid of that. So we highlight the list, clear, go down, highlight the list, clear, go down. And then now we're going to enter in all these, all these different ranks here. Okay. Oops. 
Okay, so here's all of our new Spearman's rank data put in here, and then we just go back and do like we've done before, go into stat, and we're gonna calculate a linear regression. Push enter, go enter all the way through again, make sure frequency list is clear. Push enter, and then it's going to calculate us, give us negative 0.97, we'll call it. Negative 0.97, very strong negative relationship here. Okay, and then now it asks what, which correlation coefficient is more appropriate. Since this here is clearly not a linear relationship, since we're doing all of this with a linear um, regression, since it's not linear, Spearman's is going to be more appropriate for this data here. So if you get like a, you got your data is making a curve, not it's clearly not linear then you're going to want to use Spearman's, okay? You can, we can also, later on, we're going to learn how to do um, exponential and quadratic and cubic curves too, which would possibly fit this better. But for what we want right now, Spearman's is going to be, Spearman's is going to be our best bet, okay? So Spearman's, okay? And then describe the correlation between the variables. So the correlation between these variables is the population of meerkats started at 178 and it was kind of rapidly declining and then it has actually kind of started to um, kind of stabilize at about 65 or so for their population so start off high um, the population got lower and lower and then it stabilized okay so that's what we'd want to write down here okay so we just wrote that down here population starts at 178 rapidly declines and then stabilizes at about 65 meerkats okay all right, that's so all we have for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask.